a literary princess and today I have my September wrap up for you. So I read eight books in September and honestly I thought I was going to read a lot more because I was participating in two events, Shorty September and shake -tumber. So Shorty September is when you read books that you consider short in September and I would say short is about 250 pages or less. And then shake -tumber is reading Shakespeare in September. I ultimately only read one book for shake -tumber, and then six of the eight books that I read counted for Shorty September. So let's jump in and talk about them. The first book that I read is a short story and this is The Library Window by Margaret Oliphant. I have this Broadview Anthology edition which in addition to the short story which is fairly fairly short um, has a bunch of extra stuff to kind of give context for the book which I do really like. So that includes some pieces of Margaret Oliphant's autobiography, um, some stuff regarding Scotland because this takes place in Scotland and some other things. And the whole book is about 97 pages so definitely something for Shorty September. I really enjoyed this. It is about a young woman staying with her aunt and she likes to sit in the window and look out across the street through this window in a building that everyone is always debating if it's a window or not. But she can see into it and see that it is a library room and she's like why are people debating this? This is one of Oliphant's supernatural stories and I really enjoyed it a lot. I don't want to say much more because it's so short and that will you know give spoilers but I gave this five stars and I had a good time reading it. Next up was actually my Fairy Tale Friday book for August, which I mostly read in August but then finished in September. This is Deerskin by Robin McKinley. This is a reread for me. It is actually one of my absolute favorite Robin McKinley books. It is a retelling of the story Donkey Skin, or as it's called by the Grimm's, Many Furs. And I, another version, another thing that it is called is the Catskin Cinderella story. It basically focuses on a young woman who she has named Lissar, who is born to this king and queen who are like really admired by everyone. The queen is the most beautiful woman in Seven Kingdoms. The king won her hand by doing some ridiculous task. They are super in love with each other. Their whole kingdom is like in love with them. And they kind of forget all about Lissar. And the, her mother dies and tells the king, don't marry someone unless they're as beautiful as I am. And as Lissar grows up, it becomes clear that she looks rather like her mother and the king decides he is going to marry his daughter. And yeah, ew, no. Lassar ends up running away along with her very loyal fleet hound Ash and she eventually finds herself in another kingdom working for the prince in the dog kennels. This book is so beautiful absolutely gorgeously written. It is dealing with some pretty heavy stuff, trauma, abuse. <sighs> it's not an easy book to read. However, I find it really gorgeous. I love Lassar's relationship with her dog, Ash. I love a good story with a dog, okay? And I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. Do be aware if you're going to pick this up, there are triggers for sexual assault and incest. So this is not the book for everyone, but it is such a beautiful story. An amazing retelling of a tale that doesn't get told very much anymore because obvious reasons. Highly recommend. 
Next up was another read for Shorty September, and I do have a physical copy of this, but it is in an anthology, and I'm lazy. I'm not holding it up. So this is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is a 19th century American short story that is super famous, and somehow I just never read it. I know. It deals with a woman who's been unwell and because of that has been kind of confined to her room in this rented house with this wallpaper that she eventually starts seeing things in and it starts to drive her crazy. I thought this was utterly fantastic. I'm so glad I finally read it. I, I don't know what took me so long. I don't want to say anything more about the plot because that will spoil it. I think you really just go pick this up. It's not very long at all. I gave this five stars. Next up was a book that I read for my dissertation and that also counts for Shorty September. This is Weird Stories by Charlotte Rydell. It is a collection of supernatural stories mostly focused on dealing with money and inheritance. And I gave this three and a half stars. I enjoyed it. Some of them I liked more than others, which is going to be the case with any short story collection, to be honest. I thought that if I can get to the table of contents, I thought that the creepiest one was probably Sandy the Tinker. And then I did really enjoy the first story in here, Walnut Tree House. So I definitely thought it was worth reading. Not my favorite in the world, but definitely some good spooky stories to get me into the fall season with. Next up, I finally finished The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I started this in July, I think, on audiobook, but then I wasn't in the mood for an audiobook, so I put a hold on it at the library, but I had to wait for some other people to read it. This is a dark academia story about a woman named Anne who goes to New York and works at the Museum of the Cloisters and gets involved with the tarot cards that her supervisor and her co-worker are looking into. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I wish I still had the physical copy because the physical copy is gorgeous, but it was due at the library, so you know. I was thinking when I went into this that there was some kind of paranormal supernatural fantasy element because some people have marked it as fantasy on Goodreads. No, it's not at all. This is the type of dark academia that I really like where it's the focus is the people and their scholarship and how far they will go, really. So I was very happy to find that it didn't have this paranormal fantasy element that I thought it was going to have. That's not really a spoiler. I don't know who the hell is marking this as a fantasy on Goodreads. Okay, just because there's tarot cards involved doesn't mean there's magic, folks. But I really enjoyed this. Honestly, I thought it could have been longer. It was just under 300 pages, and that's the reason that it's four stars and not five. I think that it could have really been more developed, especially some of the stuff toward the end, which I'm not going to say anything because it's kind of a mystery, and I don't want to give it away, <laughs> but it, I would have read another 100 pages of this happily. So... Great Dark Academia read for the season. I had been hoping to read a few other Dark Academia books, but I ultimately didn't. This scratched my itch for it. Next up was my George Eliot project read, which also counted for Shorty September. This is Silas Marner. It is Eliot's third novel, and it comes in for my edition at 151 pages, so well within what I consider a short novel. Thank God, because some of her books are just so long. I have a whole video on this, so I'm not going to say much. I did enjoy it, and I gave it four stars. Next up is one that I was potentially reading for my dissertation, though I'm not going to use it. This is A Dog of Flanders by Ouida. It is a children's short story 
about a young boy in Flanders and his dog and their their relationship. I thought this was okay. Like it's a sweet story. It's sad. <sighs> Why do dog stories always have to be sad? I'll, I'll warn you right now, dear skin, I'll give you this heads up. Not sad with the dog aspect anyway. Sad in other ways, but the dog is fine at the end of that. The dog is not fine at the end of the dog of Flanders. Spoiler alert. It was just a sweet story. I don't know if I'd actually read it to a child, quite frankly. I gave this three stars. It was nice, but not ultimately super memorable to me and probably not one I'll revisit. And finally, I read my Shaketember read for the month. This is Twelfth Night, obviously by William Shakespeare. So I have seen Twelfth Night performed, but I had never actually read the play. So I decided this was the year to do it. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I realized that I haven't read any Shakespeare since my master's degree, and I was kind of out of practice, honestly. I started reading this and I was like, wait, what? What? <laughs> what is happening? I really had to be looking at the footnotes. And then by the time I got to the end of the play, I was like, okay, yes, I, I, I'm good now. I'm back. I'm back in the mode. It's just been such a long time since I'd read a Shakespeare play that I was like kind of rusty at how you need to read it. It definitely helped that I have seen this performed so I kind of know what's happening even when the words were kind of confusing. This is the story of a young woman named Viola who washes up from a shipwreck and disguises herself as a man to go into the court of Duke Orsino. And hilarity ensues. She's in love with Orsino. Orsino's in love with this Countess Olivia. Countess Olivia is in love with Viola, who she thinks is a man named Cesario. It's funny. It's funny. It's good. I had a lot of fun, honestly. I think that they treated Malvolio horribly. He was not that bad of a guy, quite frankly. <laughs> but I felt that way when I watched it too. It was a great time. I'm so glad that I got to participate in this event. Even if it was just reading one play, I had meant to also read The Winter's Tale and I did actually read the whole introduction to it, which was super interesting but I ultimately just did not have time, especially since I realized The Winter's Tale is a pretty complex and difficult play to read. So I will save that one for next year. I do also want to briefly discuss a book that I DNF'd, and this is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I was halfway through this on audiobook. It is a very dark mystery book about a woman named Libby who when she was a very young child her mother and two sisters were murdered brutally and her brother Ben was convicted for it. Now as an adult Libby is realizing that Ben might not have done it and is kind of looking into things to see how can we fix this and who actually killed her family. Now I have enjoyed Gillian Flynn. I read Sharp Objects earlier this year and really liked it. That was also extremely dark. Her books are very dark, which is fine. I like dark. However, dark places just became too much for me around the halfway point. And it's not really a spoiler because it's like not a big part of the plot, which is actually what bothered me the most. There is a scene of Libby talking about or just thinking about a time in her childhood after the murder of her family when she was living with her aunt and she kills her aunt's dog. And it was a very graphic scene. Now I usually would have stopped reading immediately but I was able to, since I had it on audiobook, I was able to just forward through until when the dog wasn't being spoken about so I could skip it. But even what I heard of it was incredibly graphic. 
And that really kind of turned me off. I went on with it for a little while after, but honestly, some of the stuff that was going on was just more uncomfortable than what I wanted it to be. <laughs> and like, I don't mind uncomfortable. I don't mind dark. I do mind graphic animal death, especially when it's being done by a person who's supposed to be our main character whose head we're in most of the time. I really couldn't get over that and that kind of killed the book for me. I ultimately did read a summary of how it ends and honestly I'm kind of glad I didn't continue because I did not like where the rest of this book was going. I read that I was like no 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 no. So I'm kind of happy that I didn't continue with it. So that is everything that I read in September. Let me know down in the comments below. What did you read in September? Did you participate in Shorty September or Shake Timber? Have you read any of these books and what did you think? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.